the governor is uh, married to the beautiful wife that okay. uh, for the last uh, 485 days, uh, my invitation of taking him on dinner <laughs> is lingering on. I do not know why this man is hiding his wife. Um, <laughs> uh, he's got a beautiful wife from, uh, from Botswana. Your wife is from Botswana, right? Absolutely, yes. Right. Um, I, I got to understand people from Botswana when I was in my first year in high school. Uh, because back then they used to come and study in, in Arari, a lot of them. And as, as a young man growing up, that's when I started realizing, no, no, no. I, the Botswana, Botswana people, they're beautiful. Um, so had I not married Regina, I'm sure I would have gone to Botswana. Uh, but, uh, you did it for us, so you're representing South Africa, and she is representing Botswana in your household, so that's amazing. Uh, but this is the governor. The governor's been here for a bit. I think I started to hang out with him when this was a hobby for me at the time. And um, uh, he saw the business, and he started wanting to come in to do blocks and flats and things like that. And he's done it. And with a bit of pain also, and the other day as i was talking to him and i said brother uh if the business doesn't grow like that right it grows like this like that like this like that like this like that like this but you're growing though even though you're traveling there's lots of portals along the way and now if we're not prepared of the portals that's where the biggest problem is because we feel that we have we are dying now this portal was a very big portal so over to you, Lisette. Thank you very much, TJ. And um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think I think before 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 I could start, I just want to latch on what TJ was actually hearing with us. Um, you know, in terms of um, you know resetting, restructuring, reflecting, um, and running. Um, and I think that comes with a a lot of mindset and mind shift. Um, more often than not, we want to do what we believe other people are succeeding on. Um, you know, without one investing um, resources into that which we want to do. You know, he mentioned that they invested. Um, you know, in the first session with um, um, Robert Kiyosaki. Um, it's about 100k, and at some point I thought he said 100. It's actually not 100 rands. It's about 100k, um, and such 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 investment because uh, I don't want to call it an expense. Such investment, um, one uh, quite expensive, two but are worth it. Worth it provided that you are prepared to to put in the work, um, because it doesn't matter how much money you put in and how much work you. I mean, how much money you put in, if you are not put prepared to put in the work and um, you're actually wasting money it's like putting money um you know or rather sleeping in a uh, with a blanket that has so many holes you are still gonna be cold let me tell you um so 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 and i think one of the things once you reset and you restructure and you run um you know i'm often asked you know have you ever lost money in um, in property deal and it's not to discourage just to give you as it is he said he lost a farm, he lost chickens um, with millions of rands. Um, and I think one of, the, one of the mistakes that he has alluded to was the fact that he was not prepared. He didn't take as much um, lessons before he went into, into that business, which is also something that I did. Um, I used to run a pie shop. It was mainly a business um, that I wanted my wife to, to run and keep herself busy with. Um, one, I had no lessons about it uh, in terms of running that kind of business. Where do we buy pies? Um, and uh, and uh, what kind of... So we took a business that was running at that time um, and um, bought it, bought it cash. It was about 130 rands. And we took over the lease. Um, and, 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 and we lost money, um, to be honest with you. And, and I don't think we lost money per se. It was more of uh, the lessons because we were not prepared. Um, we didn't do as much research going into that business. Um, so we lost money. 
Um, so that was not necessarily the first business that I lost money in. Um, you know, started the business as well. I was still at um, tertiary, um, and I lost money. I used to buy cell phones and uh, from students who are broke at the end of the semester, the following semester, and, you know, I sell them the cell phones at a higher price. And I got scammed as well, uh, replying to an advert from a newspaper. So I have lost money. Um, and I remember when I started with property, when I decided to take it as a, as a business, and there was a day where I signed two OTPs because I was on fire. Uh, if there's one thing about me, I go for it. It's either I don't fail in half measures. It's either I fail completely and restructure, reset, or I go for it and I succeed and learn from the lessons from my failures um, and uh, continue with those ones if I am succeed, uh, if I succeed. So I remember on a day, I lost about 90,000 on two deals. Almost similar, almost identical um, scams. I didn't report it to the police because it was just a waste of time. So I remember when I was talking to my coach at that time, um, you know, I just said to him, you know, I just realized that I've been scammed. And I was so nonchalant about it, not because I had money, but it's because it's useless for me to cry over this. They say it's useless to cry over spilled milk. It's spilled. There's nothing that you can't do. You can do. You can't mop it. You can't. It's spilled. It's on the floor. Just clean the floor, and the show goes on. Um, so I have lost money in some of the deals, um, and 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 and. and and simply because I've lost money from the deals, I didn't go back and say property doesn't work because that's a lot a lot of people do. Um, you know, they would lose money, um, you know, have it bet to one bad tenant, and they go and say, um, you know, property doesn't work. Um, you know, it works, you need to prepare yourself. Um, you know, you're going to get good tenants. Um, they may also be bad apples, bad tenants. Um, simply because they are bad tenants, it does not necessarily mean that all tenants are bad or the property does not, uh, does not work. Um, you know, we need to we need to train ourselves for for victory, guys. Um, and um, in as much as we also need to train ourselves for for losses, uh, because they will happen. Um, you know, you will lose money at some point, uh, and you'll make a lot of money. Sorry, you'll make a lot of money. And once you've lost money, regroup. Um, like I said, it's useless to cry over spilled milk. Um, you know, just just regroup. Understand where you made mistakes. And make sure that you don't make such mistakes, uh, such mistakes like I lose money in property of the two deals. Um, basically, sign the OTPs. I wanted to do back to back uh, on the first one. The second one, I was actually going to do a, a development here in Oliven. One was in Social Nguve. Nice property to me. I was going to do a back to back deal. Mm -hmm. So, and I thought I did everything right. Um, one, we signed the OTP at the at the uh, conveyances attorneys. Um, so I don't know what they had discussed. So the attorneys thought these guys, you know, they were just using the boardroom for something else. And these guys, you know, he represented himself as an attorney and he was not, uh, but he was using the attorneys uh, in both instances. They were using attorneys offices. Uh, so I went to sign the attorneys. We signed the OTP. I met the supposedly uh, conveyancer. I met the supposedly seller. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm content with that. Now, at some point they called me because they wanted to, you know, can you give us a bit of cash to show that you are serious? I said, no, I can give you money. I do have a bit of cash. And um, that was one mistake that I did. Um, you know, I wanted to pay, pay it into the transfer, uh, um, into the attorney's account. And I thought I was paying through the attorney's account. So what I do every time I make payment, I validate. Those things are actually available online validate that indeed the account holder it's let's say it's devil if it's devil or let's say if it's let's say indeed that account belongs to that particular person i don't compromise give me your id let me verify that indeed you are you are a seller so i have lost a bit of money Um, i have lost money and um, let me say it's a bit of money ninety thousand in a day and um, like i said i didn't cry over it Um, what was important for me was the lessons out of it so that's the school fees that I have paid. But I've trained my mind uh, because I just looked at it. I didn't even tell my wife, by the way. Looked at it and said, well, shucks, guys, I've been scammed. My money is gone. So there's nothing that I can do. I can go and get the gorillas to go after them. It's, you know, I'm not even going to go to the police. I'll go to the police if it was a short 
I was going to claim from the insurance, but I know the police would not do anything about it. Um, so, so it was more on the mindset because I trained myself that, um, you know, I need to prepare myself for losses. There are going to be losses. I need to prepare myself and train myself um, for for victories. Um, so, so, so basically, just to focus today, we're just going to focus on how to find great deals at um, at auctions. Um, and I would not want to assume um, that we all understand how auctions work. Um, you know, my assumption is that we, we don't understand how auction works. Uh, and how to find, how do we make sure that we find great deals at auctions? Uh, have I found great deals of auction at auctions? I believe that I have, I have done so. Um, what do I buy at auctions? Almost everything. Um, but I, and I'll show you some of the things that I have bought um, at auctions and um, what have been my lessons. And, and I hope you'll be able to draw inspirations from my lessons and also take my lessons and, um, and implement them. Um, uh, John Ron said, uh, you know, time is more, it's more valuable than money. Um, you know, you can get more money, but you cannot get more time. And, and, and this is absolutely true. Um, you know, I think once you, you reach a particular stage where it's not necessary about money, but it's about, it's about time. I know they said, you know, um, time is money. Uh, but it's about time and um, you know how do you make sure that you leverage on your time and what do you use your time for do you use your time to empower yourself do you use time to make sure that you grow as a person or do you use do you waste your time so i think it's, uh, it's entirely up to you but what you should know is today's day this moment it's not gonna come once this time is gone it's gone the question is how have you utilized that time because if you lose money now on a deal, um, you know, at within an hour, within whatever time, you could actually make that money. But you're not going to make more time. So it's about impo it's important that we utilize our time. Um, you know, who am I and what inspires me? Um, you know, I'm a husband and a father. And people would say, why do you start with a husband? Were you told that you must start with a husband? Absolutely not. Uh, but first and foremost, I'm a husband and a father. Um, you know, to my two lovely kids. Um, so they are they are part of my why as to why I need to wake up early, um, you know, in the morning. And uh, what is important for me is to create uh, memories with my family, memories for my children, um, and also for my wife as well. So I've got two lovely kids, age uh, 13 and 14, rather 10 and 13 and 14 this year. Um, almost twins, um, so they are my wife, and this is my my wife uh, that TJ was talking about from from Botswana. Um, I'm still a a nine to five, whatever that means. I'm still a nine to five employee. Um, I'm a finance manager um, in the public service. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but publicly, anything that I do publicly, it's more on being a property investor. Um, hardly share anything that's got to do with my job because that is there. Uh, it's part of my nine to five when I knock off. Uh, you know, I wear a different hat and I start and focus on my uh, my property journey as a property investor. Uh, I consider myself a successful property investor um, because of the lessons that I have learned thus far and my failure. My failures have actually made sure that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I go there and uh, share my failures and my successes. Uh, hence, I'm a speaker, I'm a coach and a mentor. I share my successes, um, you know, with everyone, um, you know, to make, to inspire them, but also share my failures um, because we know that, uh, you know, we don't only want to share, um, you know, the successes, but also the failures as well, because the failures are the ones that make sure that we actually succeed. Um, you know, why do I invest in property? Yes, I'll come to that in terms of the... Um, you know, the journey on the auctions and what are the things that you need to do. But I think what is important is for us to understand why we are investing in property. Uh, and, and these are some of my reasons. And my reasons may be quite different from, 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 from yours. Um, one, I want to give a head start to my great-grandchildren. Um, not even to my children, not even to my grandchildren, but rather to my great-grandchildren that I may not even meet, by the way. Um, and, and I think we want to change a narrative, um, not only the narrative, but the way we're doing things. Um, because what we are putting now are the building blocks for
for our kids, grandchildren and great grandchildren. Um, you know, imagine one day, you know, or rather imagine if you were still now in 2024 benefiting on the decisions that your great grandparents made before they even knew you. Um, you know, you are benefiting financially. Um, you know, at some point, maybe after World War II, I know we couldn't buy properties as black people then, rather we couldn't own land. Imagine after then, great uh, after the World War Twos and the World Wars One, um, and 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 somehow they managed to get a piece of land, or they have made some sound decision um, that you are still benefiting even up to today. Um, you know, you could imagine where you would be. Um, you know, you don't even need to start because I think most of us where we started, and it's not even an excuse where we started is that we started with 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 a low base with minors. Um, you know, you started with. They call it black tax, it's not black tax, we are simply assisting members of the family. Um, you know, most of us, you know, went to institution of higher learning. When we went to institution of higher learning, most of our parents could not even afford that. I, you know, I'm a product of, they call it NEFSAS now, then it was TEFSAS in our days. I'm a, I'm a product of that. That is why I made sure that, um, you know, within two years, um, you know, I went to them, you know, when I started working, I didn't even wait for them to, to trace me, I went to them and say, okay, I owe you, now I'm working, uh, how much can I pay? They said, I can pay 200 trend. I said, you know, 200 trend, I'm not gonna finish these things, probably I'll finish it after 10 years. So I want to finish this as quickly as possible. So we agreed on a minimum amount, but I increased that amount on a, on a, on a, on a monthly basis. But it's about the head start. Now my kids, as it is, they will, they will not even qualify for NAFSAs. Um, you know, because of the because of the where they come from, because of the family, and uh, so we have we have built a base for them, and, and and our parents did what they could. We are not blaming them. They did what they could under the circumstances, but it is up to us to make sure that we take it a notch up. Um, and one of the reasons why I invest in property is the financial freedom, the security that comes with it, um, and I want money to work for me. Um, you know, and also for passive income. And passive income, I actually wanted to put it in inverted commas because it's not so much about passive. Um, there's a bit of work that you need to do. Um, but the amount of work that you do, especially when you invest in property and the income that you get, you know, the, the correlation between the work that you do, um, you know, if, you are self, if your properties are self-managed, you know, probably, you know, out of, out of the entire month, probably you could have spent about you know, eight hours give and take one you're studying because you don't have, you may not have a team, uh, but you then say, you know, I'm getting 2000 rent from my tenants uh, and I only invested, um, you know, eight hours per month. And that eight hours per month, that's what you are investing on a daily basis on your nine to five. Um, and if you were to convert how much you are getting in terms of the return and the amount of time that you're putting in on your nine to five, and I'm not discouraging nine to five, that is a base that was, that's the money that we use, and your pay slip is quite important to kickstart your the business that you want, whether it's property. And I'm gonna focus on property, not focus on other businesses, because what I know mostly is property, not other businesses. On the property, if you want to start, you know your 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 pay slip is the um, it's one of the and your pay slip and your um you know your credit if you're credit worthy, those are some of the best instruments not only, but some of the best instruments to kickstart your journey. So it's about how you utilize your pay slips. Um, and also the reason of a property is that it's infinite returns. Um, infinite returns, it's um, the property is gonna be there. If it ends you 2,000 rand, probably in the next 10, 20 years, the amount will be about 20, 30,000 rand. So the returns are infinite. As long as you continue to own it um, or have control over it, because uh, for as long as you continue to um, you know, put a work on, on that property, you maintain it and so on and so forth. So the, the returns are infinite. You also get tax breaks and deductions. Um, you know, there's capital appreciation. Uh, 10 years ago, that property may be, not areas uh, grow by the way, but that property could, could have worth about 500,000 after 10 years, it's about a million rent. So there is that capital appreciation plus the income that you continue to enjoy on a monthly basis, but also the diversification of your um, or you fill your portfolio. How did I stumble upon um, auctions? Um, I have never made a deliberate decision to be or rather involved in, 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 in property to start with or auctions for that matter. Um, it was just by, you know, sheer luck 
um, and I had been I'd been reading. Um, you know, I read I read I read quite a lot. Um, so one of the things that I do tend to um, you know stumble upon was the you know property section and the auctions. And I used to attend auctions, I, a lot of them. Um, you know, in Galaga Estate, there used to be that company, Auction Alliance, it went under um, on a monthly basis. Uh, they used to have auctions and I would go there just for interest sake. And that's where my interest in auctions and also in, 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 in property were actually peaked. But what is an auction? It's, it's, it's a public sale um, in which goods or property is sold to the highest bidder. Um, so if it's private sale, it's not an auction. Uh, it must be a public sale. Of course, you must register. There are conditions that you must then meet, uh, but it must have been advertised publicly. Um, you know, like uh, I think they said, if you want to buy the cars like the Rolls Royce and others, they only send out an invitation to to their clientele. Um, so it's a it's a it's a cabal, so to say. Um, you know, if you want to be part of that, you know, someone must invite you. But however, with auction, it's a public sale, um, you know, in which the goods or property are sold to, to the highest bidder. One, it must be public sale, as I've mentioned. Two, it is going to be sold to, to the highest bidder. If it's not going to sold to the highest bidder, it's not going to be, um, you know, an auction. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got any question as we are proceeding, um, please let me know. Um, and just at a high level, the types of auctions that we have, number one, is an auction without reserve. Uh, and what do we mean by auction without reserves. That's when we sell goods to the highest bidder without reserve. So meaning there is no set price. And I think some of, you know, you've had properties where, you know, before they changed the consumer protection ad, properties being sold for 10 rents in Soweto, properties being sold for 100 rents. Um, of course, they come with, the, you take over the outstanding property rates and taxes, whatever that property owed. Um, and the responsibility to evict people, it becomes yours. But when it's sold without the reserve, so meaning, you know, you can, whatever ridiculous amount that you uh, offer that you made, it will be accepted. Why? Because there's no reserve. There's no set price that has been set. Um, and that is important, which will come to that, to understand why a property, um, or that is to understand the reason why a property is actually coming up on auction. Uh, not only on uh, properties, but, you know, whatever goods that they're actually selling, why is it coming up on auction? Um, so, so, so it 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 does you know it allows auction does not allow competing bids by seller or agent. Um, you know it's a competing bid um, with um, between 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 buyers, um, and uh, with auction without um, reserves, the seller cannot withdraw the goods. So you can't decide that um, on the day of the auction that uh, you know the auction is not proceeding. Um, you know, you, 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 you can now withdraw the goods. You no, know, that can only be done with reserve. Without reserves, you can't do that. So meaning you've got the bona fide, you've got true intentions of actually selling their goods, or if it's a property, you've got the intentions of actually transfer ownership of the, of the, the assets of the property, uh, you know, regardless of the price. Like I said, if um, you buy the property at 10 rents, it's going to be sold to you at 10 rents. If buying it for 100,000 for a million rent, it's going to be sold to you and transfer will then take place. That is exactly what you, you will actually be buying from. Uh, and then the one without reserve is more of an inverse of that one. So is that the seller has established a minimum, um, you know, uh, reserve price. So meaning I'm selling, I'm taking this property at an auction. My reserve price, it's a million rent. Uh, and what you should know is that the auctioneer can bid up to the reserve price, not above. How do they bid that? So they're not necessarily going to raise hands, by the way. So sometimes they can start the auction and say, um, yes, it's um, lot number one. This is a property situated at wherever, let's say Centurion, three bedroom or five bedroom double. So they give you the description of the property. So you must have already done the work. So they then say to you, how much giving it to me? Starting bid, two million rand. In actual fact, we're at the reserve price about a million rand. They can start it there. If you raise up your hands and then you then say, confirm that you am actually, um, you know, um, start the bid at two million rand. So it means the reserve price has already been met. Or they can start it at 500,000 rand for that matter. Whereas the reserve price, it's, um, it's a million rand. And how do they determine the reserve price? There are a lot of things that they actually take into account. If I'm the one as a private seller who's selling the property, it's either because I want to make sure that um, um, you know it will cover 
the outstanding bond, or I believe that the property is worth about a million rand. So therefore, my, my reserve price will be a million rand. Um, and then the goods are sold to the highest bidder, subject to. So if you've attended auctions, um, you know, you'd hear that um, sold STC or subject to. So it's subject to confirmation. It's subject to acceptance by the by the seller and sometimes the seller is not necessarily the owner of the property it could be that uh, you know the seller is a master of the high court or uh, the seller is the bank whoever the seller is or whoever has the right to sell that property uh, so that is a person that will then need to confirm the the selling price um, and then the other thing as i've mentioned the the auctioneer or the owner may bid on uh, at the auction uh, but provided that the notice has been given that they are actually going to bid on that um, on that property so what are the other types of auctions um like i've, I've mentioned is stc subject to confirmation so 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 you know yes the auctioneer will then say knock down the gavel and say sold however it's stc meaning subject to confirmation by the seller uh, because either the reserve price may not have been met. Once the reserve price has been met, they're not going to say STC. Because the asking price or the reserve price may be a million rand. If the offer is 800,000, they're going to present it to the seller. Um, and then, you know, the seller may decide to accept or they may decide not to accept the, the bid. But once the minimum reserve price has been met, it is sold. Because you told them that I'm selling this property, my reserve price is a million rand, you can withdraw from that afterwards. So once it has been knocked down, it is your property, the seller must actually accept that. Um, and then the auctioner knocks the hammer and closes the auction provisionally, as I've mentioned. Um, you know, so meaning it has been sold to the, to the seller, but it is STC, it is subject to um, confirmation. What are the types of auctions? And, and I want to put emphasis on this so that you understand the rewards and the risk with respect to each. And one may ask and say, why do I want to understand the type of auction um, and, and how does the risk and the rewards come into it? Uh, one, as a, because you're a property investor, one thing that I always tell people is that, one, you are on your own. The auctioneer is there to represent the interest, not your interest, but the interest of the seller. It is the seller that will be uh, paying them. The agent is there, or the property practitioner is there to represent theoretical to represent the interest of everyone. But the reality is they are there to represent the interest of the seller. And I always say, we as buyers, we as property investors, we are technically on our own. So it is therefore in your interest to understand all the dynamics in this field. So, so when there's someone says, if you see, they say it's a volunteer auction. So you must understand what does it mean? Can I get a good bargain? Why, what do we, why do we go in auction? It's one of the avenues where we could actually, it's one of the avenues to buy a property, but it's also one of the avenues where you could actually score a deal. Not always, but you could score a deal. The happens is where I've seen property people overpaying for property for, for properties. Why? It's because they did not do diligence, which we'll talk about it later on. So simply because it's an auction, it does not mean that it is going to go for a song. So I want to dispel that myth. Simply because it is at an auction, or it's going to be sold at an auction, therefore it is going for a, it's going to go for a song. It's not in all, on, it's not in all instances. So it's about you understanding and empowering yourself to understand why. Because you must ask, you must ask them when you call an auctioneer before the auction and ask them why are they selling, or you call the broker and say why, what type of auction is it? Is it a divorce settlement? If it's a divorce settlement. Unfortunately, yes, we you know, don't want people divorcing, but it's a reality of life. The same as a deceased estate. So it means there's an element of motivation. There's an element of desperation. Typically, not always, typically when people are going through divorce, look, they don't want to see each other. Whatever that they used to own together, they want to make sure that they sell it. So meaning the wife will say, whatever that we get at an auction, we must accept it. And the, hus and the husband also will say, whatever that we get at all, because I don't want to do, I don't want anything to do with this woman. Because sometimes divorce is acrimonial, not in all instances, by the way. So sometimes that divorce is acrimonial. So that's where you may get an opportunity 
so the type of auction is it's a voluntary auction so that's when the seller decided to go the auction route um, and decide not to use an uh, the agent or, or property pract uh, practitioner um so for this one i always say you may pay a premium not always but you you are likely to pay a premium let me put it that way because it's someone who decides that you know what my property is worth about a million rand i want a million rand or even a 1.2 million rand i'm not taking it to to the agent let me sell it to the auction why because people have realized that there is a perception about auctions people think that at auctions you will get properties at songs like i said it's not always if you've not done the work you may end up overpaying for the property especially when it comes to the voluntary uh, the voluntary auctions number two is the bank auction so this is an auction initiated by the bank either for the property that it owns or for or to assist a property owner who has defaulted or is in areas so the person owes the data owes the because the bank lent you money and the, you put the property as a security because it is your property by the way you put the property as a security you technically sort of own it with the bank and um, if you do default so the bank has that security and what we must understand is that the banks are not in the business they're in the business of selling money they're not in the business of owning properties so that is what banks do they're not in the business of selling property i mean owning properties and um, the last thing that they want to do is actually to own properties by the way because it means now they're gonna have to arrange for security they're gonna have to do all these other things while the property if it's a property in possession while the property is actually going to be sold so 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 some is um, it's, uh, those are the auctions that are initiated by the banks and the yes you can get a property at a, at a song on this one as well but what is important is you must do your due diligence but we'll cover the due diligence later on so in all of them do your due diligence not only for auctions you know when you're going to view a property you have already done your desktop due diligence where is the property what is um what are the amenities near the property um how much are the properties being sold in that particular street and so on and so forth so you must also do the very same thing um you know with auctions the sheriff's auction so the sheriff's auction that's where properties are sold so the typically the bank would have um you know gotten a court order that lesita owes us and he has not paid us it's not the bank that owned the property so the bank can't go and uh, sell your property no they go to the court and they must demonstrate to the court that one they are they've got an interest in the in the property two you owe them so they will produce the contract you owe them this is how much you owe and then this is how much you've actually defaulted and um, because once you default now the bank calls the recalls the entire amount if the balance was about um seven hundred thousand so they're not only recalling the areas they are recalling whatever that you owe them and say so in terms of the contract they you know sign that clause that we did not even read we just signed and now they're saying we are recalling our debt at the um, you know as of today mr tuna you owe us seven hundred and eighty thousand rand plus all the legal costs and we therefore demand that money you don't have that money because you are in areas now they will then take you to court obtain a court order these days the court what they would do is they will then put a reserve price because why they found that you know you've been owning the property for the past 19 years in your last year you know things went pear shame you find that you only owe about hundred thousand um but the property the value of is about 1.5 but you owe them hundred thousand so you are unable to pay you've been paying them ten thousand rent for the past 20 years let's assume that interest rate had been consistent you've been paying them for the uh, for the past 19 years now you don't have that hundred thousand anymore what i said some people don't know that you know what let me let me let me sell this property let me let me remove this property from my uh from my portfolio because i can't own i can't afford it anymore let me sell it and um, how do i sell it and what one other thing that people also don't know is that you could if you want to sell a prop if you want to sell something the quickest yes of course you can do it with an agent privately but you can also do it with an uh, through auctions not only can you buy but you can also sell uh through auctions so 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 typically the bank would have uh, would have obtained a court order and then the debt because the debt has defaulted so the bank also would attend the auction at a sheriff's auction because they've got the interest in there so when they are there if someone bids and they bid probably up to maybe up to the reserve amount because the court has, has put the reserve a reserve amount which by the way these days they are unable to 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 get to the reserve price 
Because typically you'd find that the reserve price is almost close to market value and no one wants to pay market value. We are investors. We don't pay market value. We want to buy it because we make money when we buy. We want to buy it lower. So the bank would also attend. So if they are owed 100,000 and the offer there is 400,000, yes, the bank would say, yes, we can confirm. Yes, you can sell that. So they're not going to buy that. But if they get you know, the highest bid and the offer is less than that, the bank would also raise their hand. And once they have risen their head, it then moves to number four, where it then becomes a property in possession. So meaning this is a property that has been resolved, uh, repossessed by the bank. It will then be sold uh, to recoup their money. So it moves from it being a sheriff auction, it moves at sheriff auction to become a property in possession. Um, so then it becomes a repossessed. So you can go to the website and uh, search for repossessed properties. You can go to websites such as uh, My Roof to find the repossessed property. So once a property has been repossessed, so it means it is owned by the bank, not at the sheriff's auction. This one, it is owned by the bank. It's not a bank assisted auction. There are those, the programs, what they have, where they assist their clients, why they don't want to own them. So if it's a property in possession, they are responsible for what, they are responsible for the, all the utilities and to guard that property and it costs them money. So they don't want to have those properties in possession, but they are there, they, they do own them, uh, those properties in possession. And then at some point they're going to, typically they would give them to the, to the agents to sell them or sell them through auctions. But the first one it would be to give them to the agents who are on their database. The agents will then advertise them. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bank owned property. Um, and then from there, it is the bank that would need to accept the, the offer. Yeah, so what is it that you need to do, uh, guys, research about ocean properties? The very same, ordinarily, the very same way that you'd research about a property from an agent. Uh, one, utilize online platforms uh, for online listing. Um, so they do advertise their, their, their auctions uh, that are coming up, um, sometimes even up to a month uh, before the auction. Um, you know, explore the online auction platforms, um, subscribe to them, go to your property 24, um, look under auctions, you will see them, they do advertise them on the private property, property auction, uh, uh, property 24, um, you know, look for the, don't go and look for, 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 for industrial area, for industrial properties when you're not looking for industrial properties. Um, you can then filter based on your area and what is it that you're actually looking uh, for. Set up alerts, um, you know, as and when there are new properties that have been added. Um, you know, uh, subscribe to, to the mailing list of those auction um, um, uh, companies, um, you know, attend the auctions just to get a feel of what's going on, attend the auction. And part of doing the research, okay, I'll come to that under due diligence. Um, you know, these days you can even attend online auctions. Um, some that are actually on YouTube, some that are recorded, you'll find them on YouTube. Um, you know, understand exactly what is going on um, and put yourself in the moment and say, if I was there, how would I have reacted? Because it's a, it's a roller coaster ride um, of emotions when you are attending auctions. Everything happens so, so, so fast. Uh, so you need to have a sharp mind. You must have done your homework. You know how much you're actually prepared to pay for that properties. Network with auctioneers, network with uh, um, agents, guys, uh, and fellow investors. Um, when you network with in auctioneers, um, typically at the beginning of the year, um, you know, I do call them because I'm, I know some of the guys tell them that this year I'm focusing on, say I'm focusing on student accommodation. You know, let me know if there's anything student accommodation, this number of beds minimum, um, and then my minimum budget is this. So as and when they'll tell you that listen, I've received a mandate because typically they would get a mandate before they even advertise it. Get a mandate. Um, yes, we've looked at it. We are still going to take pictures. We're still going to take. So they'll tell you about that and saying there is this property in that area. I think it's something that you can actually look. You can actually love. By the way, you can still buy a property before it goes on auction. Or you can still buy a property after it's being advertised, you can make an offer. If your offer is accepted, sometimes the others they would then say they can accept it or then say your offer then becomes an opening bid at an auction. And so at the auction, they would do indicate that yes, we have received an offer and the offer on this property is 1 million rand. Anyone who wants to uh, bid 1 million rand, if there is no one, then you may be the you may be the highest bidder on that particular property. Guys, do due diligence. Um, you know, like I said, I've seen people overpaying for properties. One, establish the reason why it's being uh, it's being auctioned. 
Is it is it a sheriff's auction? Is it a voluntary auction? Um, you know, is it a motivated auction? Is it a divorce settlement? Is it a is it a deceased estate? Because that's when you then understand the type of opportunities that are there. Not only opportunities. If it's a deceased estate, you must know uh, must know and understand that it will take longer. One for 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 your offer to be accepted, and uh, two because sometimes you have to go to the master of the high court. Um, you know, sometimes the liquidation. So understand why it's been auctioned, uh, so that you know who's going to accept it and how. And you need to prepare yourself for, um, 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 you know, how long it will actually take time. I always give an example. There's a property that I bought in Sashanguve in 2021, um, May. The auction was in May. It was transferred in 2022, almost a year later, um, because the. Uh, it was a deceased estate, but the lady was uh, then migrating. So the husband was, uh, was was owned by by a couple. The husband died. They were all from Nigeria, here in Sushanguve. It took almost a year, and um, because part of the because it was a deceased estate, now you are dealing with two territories now. Now when they send document, because they can the courier documents, it's not going to be signed over. Can email the document. Uh, it has to be original document. Um, you know, send them to Nigeria, and then someone did not want to sign because it was a, you know, it was one of the heirs. So they did not want to sign. So it delayed the entire process. You must then be prepared for them. So, like I said, it took me almost twelve months from the time that the, my offer was accepted up until the the transfer of that property. You need to be prepared for that, um, and have at least um, like any other strat like any other um, uh, process property that you're buying. Don't have one exit strategy. Have a minimum of, minimum of at least two exit strategies. You can imagine if my intention was to do a back to back, then it takes me more than a year. So it means chances are my strategy will change because after a year things change. Could imagine if it was bought pre, uh, you know, pre COVID. It was bought in January 2020. Then the next thing there is COVID. So obviously, you know, my strategy will then have to change. Um, you know, visit your property with a builder or home inspector. Uh, you know, look beyond the paint. Look beyond the paint. Um, so the builder can give you, can even go with you, quote you how much it will actually cost you to bring the property up to up to scratch. Do your area research. What is the average in the area? The rental. Study the conditions and the rules of the auction, guys. Um, are you, you know, um, is the property is the owner a vet registered vet vendor? If it's a vet vendor and is it part of their sales? Um, then you must know that you're actually going to be paying vet. You're not going to be transfer, transfer duty, not transfer cost, transfer duty. And once there is VAT and the amount is uh, it's actually going to be higher. You can actually obtain pre pre qualification from your bank or bond originator, which is uh, you know ideal, so that by the time you go to the auction, you know exactly how much you actually qualify for. Some of the bidders, pack colleague, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are so sufficient that you can actually take it to the bank. The bank can make a decision. So you don't need to do there's no there's no there's no research that you need to do there's no edit no it's got everything because it shows you exactly where the property is um and what are the opportunities so what do i buy from properties guys i buy almost everything from properties uh here on the first picture to your left i was actually showing you a microwave i bought this microwave when i was running a pie shop i mentioned that i used to run a pie shop i bought this microwave um who can guess how much would you pay for this microwave um, that was in 20, I think 2016. It's still operating. This picture was taken to um, this year. This microwave, the picture on your left. How much do you think that microwave is? How much would you pay it for? Give and take. I uh, take a guess. Two fifty. Sorry. Two fifty. Two fifty. One hundred. <laughs> I I bought it for I think it was 90 rand before VAT and all other costs, but basically it cost me less than 120 rand. After all costs, hmm. their commission VAT and I think VAT at that time was 14 percent. So I got it for because I was looking for microwave and the the tables and so on. So I got it for um for less than 120 basically. Um, I've bought my car. Oh, sorry, it's the car that I'm currently using. I bought this car. I bought it at an auction. Um, I think it was about sixty-five thousand. Um, so I'm showing that I'm not only buying properties at auctions. Um, this, this, this one on your on your left, this picture. 
Uh, it says OB Flex. Uh, I'm actually going today to go and fetch this. I bought um, I bought a student accommodation. Um, so um, I got a quotation for single beds. Um, it was about 32,000 rent. Um, and then fortunately there was an auction. So there are a number of beds. The total here, I'm getting 22 bases uh, and about 15 mattresses. Um, in total, I've paid, the auction was on Thursday, it was online. I'm going there to fetch it today. Um, it's 7.2, 7,200 for 22 bases and about 15 mattresses because that's the only thing that I was looking for. Um, and then this is a property that I bought in Anyehof. It's in Rustenberg. Um, so I bought it. I think I'm sharing the details in the next slide. So, so, so I buy almost, you could buy, you could basically buy almost any, everything at an auction. It's not limited to property. I know we're on property. Um, you know, even if you want to, let's say, like I said, in my case, I'm doing student accommodation. You're looking for mattresses, you're looking for TVs, you're looking for whatever. You could get such things at an auction, provided that you don't overpay for it. Because sometimes when you go to an auction, you're competing with people who want these things for the, for, for, for primary residents, people who don't know, people who are excited and think that everything at an auction, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bargain. Yes, I've seen people overpaying uh, for stuff. So what are some of the auction successes? Um, I've talked about this in some of my previous videos that um, I was a very novice, um, wanted an auction while I went to, see, to, to, to fix my cell phone. Uh, I ended up buying two properties. The purchase price that I got for that property, I got it for 100, 180,000 rent for a one bedroom and a two bedroom, two bathroom was about 300,000. Um, and then I then gave my prop, a friend of mine the one bedroom, one bathroom. Uh, the market value at that time was about 300,000. The market value for my trip, uh, two bedroom, two bathroom was about um, um, 500,000. Um, I sold the properties in 2012. Uh, because of lack of knowledge, um, lack of knowledge is if I had known then about refinancing, I would not have sold this. But that is school fees that we are paying. I would not have sold that because I got it close to absolutely nothing. So when my pie business was not doing well, then I decided that, you know what, I've got an asset. Why can I sell this asset? But if I had the knowledge that I have now, I could have gone to refinance it because the rent then far, far covered the everything, even if I had refinanced it. It would have given me the cash and still the rent would still have covered that. Um, this is a property that I was talking about. This is what I call a the wedding property. Um, I did a, 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 a an interview with TJ and I said my tenants paid for my wedding. Um, so that's the beauty about property. I still own the property. So then I knew about refinancing. So I bought this property for 400,000 excluding VAT. So VAT was applicable in this case. So the market value at that time was about, uh, even at the moment, it's about 650,000 rand. My bond repayment at that time was about 2.5. And then the rental at that time, I think it was about 5,000. At the moment it's 6.5. I still own this property. Um, I have re-advertised it now, just got a tenant now. It is 6.5. Um, my rental at the moment, I'm charging 6,500, uh, 6.8, around there, 6.5, 6.8. And then my current levy is very low, but well-maintained property, I mean, uh, complex, it's 720. Um, so this is the property that I always say, um, it's got sentimental value with my wife because that's the property that actually did our wedding. Um, so that's the beauty about property. So I took money, um, you know, did the wedding, gave my wife the wedding that she wanted and uh, still own the property, it's still there. We still own it and we are paying for it. And the tenant is, in fact, the tenant is actually paying for it. Um, and then, then we moved to and migrated into block of flats. Um, you know, we bought this. It is based in Rosettenville. Um, so this was bought at an auction in February 2022. We were on a roll and say, you know what, we are moving. We are establishing a sorry guys, a property, uh, a property company, and did this with a friend of mine. Um, you know, it's got a it's a ten it's a ten unit property. In essence, we bought it for two point. Uh, four, uh, the municipal value, I think at that time was about 3.7. 3 and then the rental that we are collecting on a monthly basis is 55,000. Very nice and neat property. Um, and I don't want to tell you that I bought this unseen because I don't want you to go and do that. Uh, but yeah, it happens that it is one of those um, uh, good properties. Uh, it's got five, two bedroom, uh, four, three bedrooms and one, one bedroom. 
uh, units and it's got three rooms uh, each and every unit has got a garage you can so you can see them um, and it's lock up garages and um, so we still own this property and the second property this was bought in february and then in march while this one was the previous one was not even transferred we went and bought um, another property and um, so this one was a 12 um, one bedroom units and it's got eight garages it's got four open parking so each and every unit has got a, uh, it's got parking it's either it's a covered it's a, it's a, it's a garage or um, open um, open parking um, so the rental there it's um, 50000 rent and and we are not doing anything to basically maximize on this i think this one is the one that we said because the lounges are so huge we actually want to turn them into two bedrooms but at the moment we are not doing anything we just took them and we are running with them and the opportunities on this two they are all sitting on one title date meaning um we own the you can't it's not sectionalized unlike this one in rustenberg where it's section i own a unit within the complex this one we own the entire block even this one we own the entire block so the opportunity is there it's um you know if we want to really explore and exploit it we could actually do things like um um you know what do you call it um open a sectional title uh, go through the process and divide it and then um, you know it then becomes 12 units and um, you know we could then share we could then sell them if you want to sell them so that's an opportunity but you must also understand that there are rules when it comes to sectional titles you need to start charging levies here we don't charge levies and the beauty about uh, you know, such properties water electricity and uh, the only thing that we pay is the rates refuse we claim it from the from the tenant so your rental here it does not include those recoverables so i only pay for for lights for the common properties each and every unit has got meter water meet i mean prepaid meter we don't have no water meters as yet so we take the entire bill of water from coj we divide it to into into the units proportionally so a three bedroom units here is not going to pay the same uh, water as the as a one bedroom unit so we divide it per proportionally in terms of the unit so what are what are some of the uh, takeaways one invest in yourself guys you've started by being here you are investing in yourself continue to watch videos follow the people who are doing what you would like to do on social media and social media and the internet has made things so much easier of course there's a lot of information you'll make sure that you need to filter that information do your due diligence it's non-negotiable do due diligence who owns the property what is the history on that property how much are the properties in that particular area have a planning a strategic planning don't go there and hope that you're going to um you know um going going hoping to to win a bid no you don't go there and hope and, and hope to win a bid go there with the plan if your plan was that this property is worth about it's worth about five a million rent you want to only bid up to seven hundred thousand what is the use of going to eight hundred thousand because you've said no this is my target yes you can give yourself a bit of a buffer and say maybe seven hundred and twenty if it's above that then you stop don't go there with the emotions and say, I want to show everyone that no, 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 um, you know, I can't be, you know, that lady can't beat me. And, and you know, what's going to happen to my, to my macho is if you're a guy and say, no, I must show these ladies that I can, I can, no, 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 that's, that's not how it works. Um, continuous learning, you know, it drives growth. You know, the more you continue to learn, uh, the more you'll actually grow, provided that you're actually learning the right thing. Uh, the importance of community and collaborations you know the people that you are part of this becomes part of a community collaborate because that will enhance your success and um, you know someone may be good in a particular strategy or they've got money they know nothing about strategies you are good in property you are good in the strategies then you guys could then do a, a collaboration but it is important that you know and uh, you know you know and understand the values of the person that you will be going into partnerships with that is very important uh, look, get a mentor or a coach that will propel your journey um, with what you want to do. And um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for for the opportunity. Lesaja, thanks a lot. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate the feedback that you've given us, the learnings that you've given us. But above that, I'm, a, I'm highly appreciative of you taking the risk of doing these things. Uh, you're continuously learning. That's number one. And then number two, 
uh, you are not just learning, but you're also putting the learning into action. Uh, and I do know that uh, as you go, as you grow in this business, there's no uh, business that ca that comes without the pain. Uh, it's like growing a baby. So when you're growing a baby, basically what happens is the baby tits at some point. The baby is uh, sleepless at some point. Uh, everything that a baby does in human nature, so does a business. It's the same thing. There's no difference. Uh, and at some point, then it's going to be independent. And um, But the good thing about it is that a business, you can fast track that, but a human being, you can't. So I appreciate that.